your voice and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. I want you to begin to bless him. I want you to begin to bless him. I want you to begin to bless him in the spirit. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Appreciate the name of the Lord. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. Take all the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. All the praise and all the glory be ascribed unto your name, Jesus. Thank you because you are the lion and the lamb. Thank you, Jesus, because you reign forever. Praise be your name, O God. For in Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. God bless you and have your seat. A round of applause for the choirs. Thank you, Jesus, for using you so powerful. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Shortly we'll be up standing for our prayers. And first we'll be praying for the nations. Hallelujah. We'll be praying for the nations. And the prayer will be anchored from the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 27 to 28. The prayer will be anchored from Psalm chapter 22, verse 27 and 28. After the reading, we'll just be on our feet. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. Let's be on our feet to pray in this order. Father, Father. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you will, that you will be enthroned, that you will be enthroned in our nation, in our nation, overturn the rules and reign of darkness. Let your lordship be established in every sector in Jesus name let's begin to pray oh God in the name of Jesus over overthrown the reign of darkness in this land and let your lordship be established in every sector in this nation in the name of Jesus Maraka Shakadagada I want you to pray like you mean business tonight in the name of Jesus the Lord is here where two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is there. So I want you to pray like the Lord is hearing you. Overthrow every rule and reign of darkness in this land. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, mighty Father. Take all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Next, we'll be praying for the salvation of souls. Hallelujah. Next, we'll be praying for salvation of souls. The salvation of souls of men and women in this land. I want you to know that there are a lot of people that have not come to the saving grace of Christ. And until we pray, we will not rest until we see them being saved. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that prayer will be anchored from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse, 4, verse 14. He said, but the minds were made dull for this thing. The same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away. Only in Jesus Christ can sin and the veil be taken away. So be praying in this order. Father, Father, we ask that you swallow up the veil of darkness, blinding the unbelievers around us. Suddenly, suddenly let them encounter the light and turn to you, be planted and established in the kingdom. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Every veil, let it be taken from their eyes in the name of Jesus. Let there be an encounter suddenly in the name of Jesus. Like the encounter of Saul who became Paul in the name of Jesus on his way to Damascus. Let there be an encounter. Let every veil be taken away and let them see in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
And next prayer is going to be for the word and the participant, which is you and I. Their prayer is going to be anchored from the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 19. It says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat in the right hand of God. We want to pray in this order. Father, Father, we ask for a demonstration, a demonstration of your almightiness in our service today through salvation of souls, deliverances, and transformation of lives. Give every participant a testimony in the name of Jesus. I begin to pray. In tonight's service, O oh Lord, we pray for an encounter. Give every participant in the name of Jesus their testimony. We will not come in vain in your presence. Let your work come with power to save souls, to deliver the oppressed in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Next, we pray for prayer conference. Shout hallelujah. Prayer conference 2023 is going to be anchored from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 16. He said, What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable science and cannot deny it. We want to pray in this order. Father, by your divine power, we ask for an undeniable miracle. miracle supernatural encounter signs and wonders in jesus name such that will be evident in our midst in the name of jesus and in the city of Aberdeen. in the name of jesus begin to pray and encounter oh god in the name of jesus thank you mighty father blessed be your name for in jesus mighty name we have prayed thank you mighty father because we know that you will tabernacle with us tonight and your name alone shall be glorified for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen, amen. god bless you and have your seat praise the lord it's time to give our offerings but before that um i'd like to take some testimonies from past um, prayer conferences so we have um, two that we can share today. We share the rest some other time. Um, I thank God for revealing the plans of the enemy to me in a dream. On Thursday night after the first session of the prayer conference, 2019, God revealed to me in a dream that the enemy's plan was to take my life and sell the destinies of certain members, of family members to our enemies. God who has revealed this has also given us victory over death and the manipulations of the enemy. I praise the God of all flesh with whom nothing is impossible. That is from Sister Ame D.O. <coughs> Second one, praise the Lord. I thank God for the visitation of God in my life at the prayer conference 2019. God put an end to self-induced power distortion in my prayer and word life. He healed me of stomach ulcer, and he revealed certain things to me, giving me directions and focus through his word. May his name be praised forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That was from Brother Victor. So, time to give our offerings, and I would like to read from the book of Second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse... Six. But I say, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and is and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Praise the Lord. So as we have heard, God loves a cheerful giver. And I'd like us to bring out our offerings, put it in our envelopes. The uh, envelopes printed in black is for the offering. And if you have your tithes, you also drop it in the um, tithes basket. 
uh, the offering basket when the usher is taking the run. And for those that want to give online, I believe um, media will scroll the details for us to, to be able to give online. Are we ready to give our offering? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. Day that you have purposed to bless us because your word says that you love a cheerful giver. And we have brought our offerings cheerfully to you today. We pray, Lord God, that as we give, that you let this offering ascend to your throne of grace and mercy as a sweet smelling savor in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that all the blessings attached to giving you with let us receive today in Jesus' name. And for your children that are brought their tithe, we pray that you accept their tithe and accept them in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, that the source of income that you have given them, they will not lose it in Jesus' name. And you continue to replenish their pockets. The remainder of the income, they will use it judiciously for what they want to use it for in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, as we go into your word, you let us hear you expressly and speak to all our hearts in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you are excited and you're grateful to God that you are in the sanctuary on the last day, of the month of February 2023. I want you to just go ahead and rise up on your feet and give the Lord a shout. God is so faithful. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands and just appreciate him tonight and give him praise. Father, we bless your name. Just say, Lord, I'm grateful. Just say a word of thanksgiving unto the Lord tonight for keeping us, for, for, for his mercies that had endured even over our lives thus far in the year 2023, over our families, over us, over us as a church. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. Father, we exalt you, mighty God. We honor you, Lord. We adore you, we bless you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are good. You are kind. I love a coast, Hey, I'm devoted to your grace and forever. I love a coast, You are good. Father, we are grateful, Lord Jesus. Hey, I don't say tired of us, tired of us, tired of us, and forever to your name. Father, all we have just come to say tonight is thank you, Lord. On behalf of ourselves, on behalf of our family, on behalf of Jesus, our story. Lord, it is your mercies that we have enjoyed thus far. And we have returned tonight just to say thank you, Lord. Be thou exalted, mighty God. Father, as we go into your word, speak to us. 
Lord, speak to us yourself. Let us have an encounter with your word. And no one, Lord, tonight is permitted to go back the same way they came. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let's have our seat majestically in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to tonight's Digging Deep. We're going to be going quickly because our time is running fast. I want to first of all appreciate God for this opportunity. And I want to appreciate our pastor, Pastor Dapo and Pastor Toyin. They're not here tonight. They had to quickly attend to an urgent matter. And we decree divine intervention. They're returning with, the, with testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we'll go quickly. We, have st we started a book study. It's going to be an interactive session. So let me tell you in advance because we are also going to have a group discussion. So get ready. I love when we engage together. I do not come here to teach, like teach, teach. Every one of us is supposed to have this book by now. If you have your own, let me see your hands. Soft copy. <laughs> All right, so I have had copy, hallelujah. And um, so, obviously, you've seen the book. What's the topic? It's, it's already there. That's why I said, I'll be asking questions. I'm the teacher tonight. The authority has been conferred upon me. Yay, tonight. So, I'm the teacher, and then you are the student. So, let's go, hallelujah. So, the book review, that is what we are starting. We started on Saturday, and we thank God for the dimension that God took us through. And thank God for Pastor Tony that took the first two chapters. And God bless her because I just, you know, it was a slide I just used to create my own. Some people are good with some things. Some of us, we are still learning. All these designing things, we are learning. Hallelujah. God bless her for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's go on. So spiritual authority. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move the slide. So, yeah. We will be, tonight we'll be going into, we'll be doing a recap, introduction, and we'll be doing instances of rebellion. That's, we're going to be studying two chapters tonight. The instances of rebellion continued. We started at Sunday, we started at the Sunday school on Saturday, and then we'll be looking at divine knowledge of authority. I pray that the Lord will speak to us in Jesus' name. So we'll go quickly to our objectives tonight. Then we can now, you know, run from there. Tonight, we want to gain better understanding. Please, um, media, just go with me. We are the objectives. So as I'm going, just be going because this time is not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> to gain better understanding of what rebellion really looks like using practical scriptural examples and to discover ways to eradicate such rebellion from within or amongst us, either as a subordinate or higher authority. Hallelujah. Then we'll read the scripture and then we'll take it off from there. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. I chose the TPT translation because it just explained a lot of things. It says, every person must submit to and support the authorities over him. Somebody say submit to. Somebody say support. support. Yes, the authorities over him. For there can be no authority in the universe except by God's appointment. Which means that every authority that exists, somebody say every authority that exists, has been instituted by God. Say it. Let's say it again. Every authority that exists has been instituted by God. So the next verse says, so to resist authority is to resist divine order of God, which results in severe consequences. I will say that again so that I can sink in. Hmm. To resist authority is to resist divine order of God, which results in severe consequences. For civil authorities don't intimidate those who are doing good, but those who are doing evil. So do what is right. Tell your neighbor, do what is right. And you will never fear those in authority. They will commend you for your good citizenship. So we'll go to the recap and introduction quickly. Now, thank God for the definition of authority that was you know, defined to us in, in Sunday school on Saturday. 
So the next slide, please. Authority versus spiritual authority. The difference there is the spiritual. <laughs> Somebody said the difference there is the spiritual. <laughs> All right. So authority, the way I will describe it, just to buttress some of the points that we heard on Saturday is, I remember there's a pastor that usually uses this analogy, and he says, you can imagine me assuming I, thank God so many of us, even here, like from where we come back, come from, I stand in the middle of the road, and a car is coming, and I do like this. Will they answer me? In fact, as big as I am. <laughs> and I just stand in the middle of the road, and I do this car like this. Of course, they will not answer me. But let me wear army uniform, right? Or mopo, or police, whatever it is that you want to call it. And I stand there at the junction. You know those junctions in Nigeria now? And I do like this. Will they stop or not? They will stop. Why? Because authority has been conferred upon me. Hallelujah. So that's an example of authority that I can just quickly, the analogy. And spiritual authority, when I, the synonym of spiritual authority that caused my attention was divine power. This is our year of what? So everything that you have heard from January till now, and you will hear from now till December, is spiritual authority. Hallelujah. So it's not coincidence that we are reading this book right now. It is divinely arranged by God. Hallelujah. Like we read earlier on, all authority have been instituted by God. And the truth is that every one of us, we have authority. We love authority. Right. Even as small as my daughter, Divine, is, I, I will hear that, yes, instituted by God. Examples of authorities that have been instituted by God. Can people shout it? Parents, like in the family. Pastor in the church, yes. And yes, teacher, that, and even the government. As small as, so let me use that analogy like, as it came to me. As small as, the Bible even says that we, we are kings and priests. That means you and I have authority to a certain level. But these authorities are now in hierarchies, they're in levels. So they're delegated authorities according to hierarchies. For example, divine. She has an authority to her own level. Let me use an example. If people come to my house, there's a sign, because obviously the nature of the work I do. So I put a sign on the door, and the sign says, um, please take off your shoes before you come in. If a, if a client comes, and the person walks in, and the person, no, remove the shoe. My divine will tell them, auntie, please, can you remove your shoes? Hallelujah. That's a level of authority, obviously, because that's a house. That's a territory. A gesture has an authority. If she tells the vine, you don't watch that. Mommy says, you should not, you know, she's going to listen. I have an authority, yes. And thank God for, like we learned last week, that the husband is the head of the wife. Yes. And my husband is the authority, and that's the head of the home. Right. And if for adventure, I'm maybe very strong, and I'm still trying to do a lot of things, he just tells me, will you drop everything and go and have a nap or rest? I'll just say, yes, sir. That is a level of authority there. Hallelujah. So it all varies. I'm just using an example so that when we go into our discussion, you understand where I'm going to. So what is our sole principal responsibility? Reaction to authority. Can somebody shout it? If you were in Sunday school on, Sunday, on Saturday, you remember. Our sole responsibility. What's our sole responsibility? Shout it. God bless you, sir. Obedience. So if you... If you don't assume your responsibility to your authority, what, are, what state are you in? Yes, disobedience, rebellion. You are good students. Come on, clap for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So quickly, we are going into our group discussion, and that's where the cruise of tonight is. So we are going to have group A, group B, group C, and group D. Right. The group D is online. Now, group A, from Sister Abigail forward. That's group A. So you guys to cluster around and so group B from Bra Femi forward. Group B. Now group C. Please go to the slide of the group discussion. Group C from Antitomi backwards. So you can cluster together and we'll go into our discussion quickly. Please go to the slide of the group discussion. That is the slide 
So we are going to be looking at instances of, that's the, the next one after this one, instances of rebellion. Let's cluster around. We're going to be looking at these scriptures. Please take your scriptures. Those, of the, those online, you can engage with the last scripture there. Group A, Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 27. Group B, Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 15. Group C, Numbers chapter 16, verse 1 to 36. Group D, which is online group, Leviticus 10, 1 to 2. If you are with your husband, your spouse, your friends, you can do the discussion. Let's read the scripture quickly and answer this question. The time start now. Five minutes max. The time start now. Quickly. Who rebelled? You have to identify who rebelled. What was their rebellious acts? What was the consequences? And what lesson did you learn? So as you do that... You do the discussion quickly, and there will be somebody that will represent your group to present that. Please, let's go. The time starts now. Let's read the scripture. Let's identify. So group A, group B, group C, then the online is group D. Let's go. So from the scripture, let's read the scripture. For those online, you can type your answers in the chat, and we'll get the answers. We have two minutes.
Choose a representative that will speak on your behalf. We should be rounding up. Choose a representative. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have your representative ready? Hallelujah. 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 Group C. I know our scripture was long. But the answers are just right in the scripture. So please, representatives, you need mics. Let the representative come forward. Let the representatives come forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> please come forward so that they can see you. All right, group A. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> please help with the mic. Help give a mic. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. So answer the questions. Yeah, go be. So, yeah, be. so Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 27. Uh, the first question says, who rebelled? It was Ham. He rebelled. Um, he saw his father's nakedness. And then he went to tell his brothers about it. And then he made jest of his father to his brothers. Uh, that was his rebellious act, and he wasn't apologetic about it. Um, it was even encouraging his brothers to, you know, do the same. The and then the consequences, he was cursed by his father. He was cursed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his father did say he would become a servant of servants to his brothers. Hallelujah. Imagine becoming a servant to the servant of your brothers. Oh, oh. my God. That was very, very strong. So when you're and the then the last question says, what other lessons did you learn? Uh, the first one says, honor your parents. All right. And um, the second one we have down, the team says, don't be full of wine. Mm -hmm. The root cause of all this was the wine mm -hmm. that caused you to see the father's naked nakedness. So respect yourself when you are in authority as well. All right. Don't follow the crowd. So what um, the other brothers did was they did not follow the crowd. They did not agree with Am when uh, he mentioned that. So when you do the right thing, you get the blessings attached. And okay. then when you do the wrong thing, you, you, you know the rest let's, of the story. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. So another point I'll just draw there is that uh, even though you're an authority, like the father, fathers can fail and they can fault, but it's not an occasion for you to rebel. We should learn to cover uh, father's nakedness. Hallelujah. God bless you. So, go B, go B. Go on, go on, go on. Um, go B, we were asked to read Numbers 12, 1 to 15. Um, who rebelled? Um, it was Aaron and Miriam. They rebelled against Moses. They rebe that was a rebellious act. They rebelled against Moses, his authority. And their consequence was... Miriam, she became leprous. Um, no consequence was given to Aaron because he apologized. So the lessons that we learned in our group was that you should always obey authority. Um, once you find out you're wrong, you should apologize. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they spoke against Moses. They challenged his authority. One thing, another thing I will add is that never despise God's chosen vessel, no matter what. And um, okay, let me allow them. There's a story that came to my mind concerning that, but I will yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Group C read number 16, 1 to 36. Who rebelled was, there were more than one person. Mm -hmm. um, Dathan, Abiram, and Korah. Um, what was their rebellious act? They rose up against Moses and were basically complaining that he was taking too much upon himself. They were all holy 
um, and he was acting as if he was the only holy one that God could use. Mm -hmm. And then they also complained that he brought them into a land that was not flowing with milk and honey like he promised. The consequence was that God consumed them, the ground opened up and swallowed them alive. Uh, alive. Mm -hmm. And then what other lessons did we learn? That God will always um, use the leader that he has called. He's not going to disregard the leader, even though we are all holy. But once there's a leader in charge, then we need to respect the person. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, that, those stories are just so amazing. I think we learned a lot from it. I will just add to that. Um, for Aaron and Miriam, I wrote here that where there is rebellion, we will lose the presence of God. Because from that scripture, we saw that um, when Miriam was filled with leprosy, they had to stop the camp because they kept joining with the cloud. So the cloud was lifted until after the leprosy was cleansed. So that's signifying from what the writer wrote said, when we rebel as a family, we lose the presence of God. And until that is cleared, even as a church, the presence of God will not come back. Hallelujah. And for... Do, for the Numbers chapter 36, also there were 250 leaders that rebelled. The, in fact, it was a, how will I put it, it was a community <laughs> rebellion. And those 250 leaders fire devoured them. So if you can take the screenshot of these scriptures so that you can go home and study the scriptures even beyond what we have learned tonight. And one other thing that I want to say is that one of the lessons that I learned there, whether you are supporting it or you know, an authority is that despite all, Moses did not lose his temper. He simply fell on his face before God. And they said they may have been quite honest in what they said, but they failed to see the authority of the Lord. They considered this matter a personal problem. You know the way some of us, they say, we take it personal. Uh -uh. Tell your neighbor, don't take it too personal. <laughs> no, but seriously, tell your neighbor, don't take it too personal. Yeah, so Moses never, you know, so you can, for online groups, I believe that we did our own work as well. That was for Nadam and Abihu, who were Aaron's sons, and they actually, you know, they offered strange fire unto the Lord, and the fire devoured them as well. So we can see that the sin of rebellion is a grievous act even before the Lord, and any act of rebellion, God hears it. And that, we could just say that, the work of God must be co coordinated under authority because they are supposed to support their father. Their father is the priest, but they now went ahead without the authority being conferred upon them to go and offer the incense. And that's where God's anger was kind of. So we'll now look at another scripture. This is another dimension. All these ones, they rebelled. Now let's see the story together. The next slide, please. 1 Samuel 24, 4 to 6. We can't read the whole story. And 1 Samuel 26, 9 to 11. I'll just read the scripture quickly. It says, then the men, this is the story of David. We know David, he was supposed to be king, and he was anointed from when he was young. With, um, Samuel anointed him while Saul was still the king. But what happened was that Saul actually, you know, he rebelled against the Lord. He disobeyed God when he was supposed to obey the command, kill everybody. How many Bible scholars are here? Do we know the story? Oh, I'm just... <laughs> but let me... Uh, and then, obviously, he still sought to kill David all along the way. But see David here. First Samuel 24, 4 to 6. It says, Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hands, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose, and he secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe, now, it happened afterwards that David's heart troubled him because he had caught Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Hallelujah. The, next, the, scripture, the other scripture says, But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed? And be guiltless. David said, Furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go out to battle and perish. 
the Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord anointed. Tell yourself, the Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. He said, but please take now the spear and the jug of water that are by his head. And, oh, sorry, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's go. So a few points to note there from those two scriptures and, the, you know, the story that I just, you know, paraphrased a little bit. Paul, uh, both, both Saul and David were anointed. They were both anointed by Samuel. Am I correct? So I, I did not both anointed. I'm anointed, you're anointed. Then why should you talk to me like that? Because we are both anointed. Are we? Why do you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. I said, though Saul, even though Saul was rejected at that time, but it was still, it was nonetheless God's anointed. And um, David recognized that fact. And that is what, that's why I said the difference between the people that we've been looking at and, you know, David here. And it says, Saul had attempted several times to kill David, although David had various opportunities to revenge. Those were scenarios where David was, you know, in the same cave. He was at the end, other hands. Saul was at the other, he had an opportunity. Even his men were saying, see your enemy here that has been trying to kill you. But they said he will not touch the Lord's anointed. He says, he chose not to. He even felt guilty for simply cutting the hem of Saul's skirt. There was something the, the writer said here, which is what I just, you know, copied and pasted. Backbiting. Somebody say backbiting. Bad manners or inward resistance. You know, some, some of them may not be physical, but inside you. I remember one of the jokes that they normally say that the teacher was telling the everybody in the class to stand up. This child did not refuse to stand up. He now flogged the side. Say, stand up. This, the child stood up. He said, I'm standing up, but I'm still sitting down in my mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He said, <laughs> backbiting, bad manners, or inward re resistance may not be classified as killing, yet they certainly constitute the same as cutting of skirts. It originates from a rebellious spirit. But however, we saw in the life of David there, because David maintained the authority of God, God acknowledged him as a man after his own heart, avenged him, and enthroned him. Did David become king at the end of the day or not? He did. Because he didn't take laws into his hands. He chose to allow God to revenge. So many at times, yes. Like, we, like I mentioned earlier that, yes, our fathers or even people in authority can falter, they can fail. But it's not in our position to, you know, revenge or avenge. Why don't we ask, like, then the, less, the next lesson, which is where I'm going to, you know, we're going to wrap up there. So the whole summary of this whole story today. I don't know if you have any questions. If there are any questions on the Slido, please, you can put um, the Slido link is online. And if you have questions in here as well, please just put it in the Slido link. So lessons learned from, as a subordinate, like I was sharing earlier on, that all of us, we have a level of authority. And, but there is hierarchy. Just like in the church, we have the pastor. He has been anointed by God to be the head of the church. Then we have the ordained ministers. Then we have the HODs. Then we have the workers. And the members, even the members have a level of authority. If you see, if you remember, see a new person just coming into the church for the first time, or maybe somebody trespassing. So go, who are you looking for? That's a level of authority there, because obviously you know, yes, you're right. So as a subordinate or as a higher authority, what are the lessons that we've learned? Please show us the slide. Number one, recognize and embrace your authority. Recognize your authority that has been placed over you and embrace it. I want to quickly read the scripture, Hebrews 13, verse 17, which is in the NIV version. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. Tell your neighbor, have confidence in your leaders. And submit to their authority. Even if your leader is younger than you. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they keep watch over you as those who give account. That's that scripture. So I was saying as a subordinate, lessons learned. Recognize and embrace your authority. Number two, equip yourself with prayer to be able to always resist the temptation 
to raise your hand or disclose the fault or raise your hand against authority. Hallelujah. Equip yourself with prayer. That temptation can really be so high. When, especially when you see your leader going wrong. But equip yourself. The best you can do is to pray for your leader. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, pray for your leader. Say, pray for your sanctuary leader. Pray for your choir leader. <laughs> pray for your children leader. Children church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Assume a humble posture from inside out. Then be willing and open to obey with the understanding that you are being subject to the anointing which is upon that person. Now, as the higher authority, it will be wise to remember Moses' response anytime our subordinates or even our children as a father or a mother rise up against us. I've heard stories of teenagers and, you know, and their parents and stuff like that. Sometimes I do experience it. But remember, Moses' response anytime our subordinate, subordinate rise up against our authority. All the scriptures we read, if you go back home, please read it again. You see that most of the times Moses, he didn't say a word. And that's why the Bible says that there's no man as meek as Moses. Even when there was a time when he was really angry, the Bible says he fell face down and he prayed. Seek God's face over the matter as the leader. Because yes, subordinates can annoy. Things can go wrong. Ask God for wisdom. Then be humble. Your humility will often break rebellion in others because it speaks more loudly. Tell somebody your humility speaks loudly. It speaks more loudly than any argument you could present. So our final conclusion Spiritual authority is not something one attains by attains to by effort. It is given by God. Somebody say it is given by God to so whomever He chooses. So if you find yourself in a place of authority, and that's why the Bible says, "I did not you did not choose me, but I chose you." God chose you. Tell your neighbor, God chose you. So wherever you find yourself as an authority, God chose you to be there. And wherever you find yourself as a subordinate, God chose me to be there. Hallelujah. Because I've, in, I've been in different departments, even as prayer department member or choir department member. Sometimes my prayer leader, obviously, there's been a changeover. She, she fit down annoy me before I even, but before I come to a prayer meeting, I will settle it. And then when I come, so that the prayer can be answered, I know that, ah, because she's authority. She, hallelujah. But you understand what I'm saying. So irrespective of where you find yourself as a subordinate or as a leader, understand these principles and let it guide our lives. Hallelujah. We do not obey man but God's authority in that man. We do not obey man but we obey God's authority in that man. Only the one who is subject to authority can be an authority. We see that example in the life of David there. Only the one that is subject to authority can be an authority. We must eradicate all roots of rebellion. Tell your neighbor, you must eradicate <laughs> all roots of rebellion from within us. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know if you have learned anything tonight, even from this word. If you have learned anything tonight, just give, uh, you know, give the Lord the, the glory and give him an applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now, we'll just pray. And the scripture that we'll be praying about is Ezekiel chapter 36, 24 to 25, which is the last slide. I'm proud of myself. I did well with time. <laughs> and I will give you a new heart. The scripture says, I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out of, your, out of your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. That stony, stubborn heart, there is rebellion. When I check the synonym of rebellion, you see stubborn, you see troublemaker, you see war, you see, you know, rigid. You know, that's the, that's, that's the word of God. It says, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you 
so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. I want us to just go ahead and bow down our heads right now. I don't know which aspect that word has spoken to you, but you're going to be praying this prayer even at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, please take away any stony or stubborn heart within me. In the name of Jesus, every heart of disobedience, take it away. Eradicate and uproot any root of rebellion in me, even in your church, if there are traces in me, in your church, Father, please eradicate it in the name of Jesus. I receive a new heart. I receive a new spirit in the name of Jesus, a new spirit of total obedience to your authority in the name of Jesus. Somebody praying, just go ahead and talk to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Father, take it away, any stony heart, Lord, in, the life, in our lives, even in the lives of our children. Let's remember our children. Our children, our youths, our teenagers, the little ones, Father, any stony heart. Father, take it away in the name of Jesus. Father, take it away in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we receive a new heart today as individuals. Uh, in the name of Jesus as a church. Uh, Erete posa pada barani ano sa katamra labaros. Sotu mara biara boko shindere ya. Then reboko si te mara dere ya ba shandera pala Lord. We pray, oh God, give us a new heart in the name of Jesus. Give us a new heart in the name of Jesus. Proverbs four twenty three says that we should guard our heart because out of it are the issues of life. Let's pray that Father consecrate my heart in the name of Jesus. Circumcise my heart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, circumcise my heart this evening in the name of Jesus, so that I will not be rebellion, so that I will be an obedient child of you, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's lift up our voice and pray unto the Father. Father, circumcise my heart in the name of Jesus. Touch this heart of mine. Let my heart be softened in the name of Jesus. Lord, circumcise this heart. Touch this heart. Change this stony heart, O oh God, to a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus, so that I can be like you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, do this, O oh Lord, on this last day of the month of February. Let it be written, let it be, let it be said of me that I'm a changed person, that this particular attitude, that this particular habit, that this particular trait of mine has, has been changed. I don't longer behave in such a way that it's a little bit not comfortable for people in the name of Jesus. Lord, circumcise our heart in Jesus' name. Circumcise our heart in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please let's be on our feet as we take some prayers before we go tonight. We have heard the word about rebellion. We have heard how not to be a rebellion child of God. The Bible was saying in the book of Jeremiah 20, chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. I'm reading from here. The Bible says that and I will give you leaders after my own heart who will guide you with wisdom and understanding. I will give you leaders, some version of the Bible which says I will give you pastors, some which says I will give you shepherd after my own heart. We're going to lift up our voice and pray. We have heard different ways, I mean we have seen from today different ways by which we can be rebellion to authority, to lay down authority and to be honest, if you want to be sincere with yourself, you are falling victim and falling victim in one way or the other. We are going to give prayer unto the Lord and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be submissive to the authority you have placed over me in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace tonight to be submissive to the authority you have placed over me in the name of Jesus. In any way of falling victim, I say, Father, have mercy. In the name of Jesus, have mercy over me, Lord, tonight. In the name of Jesus, any we are falling victim of the, of, of the sin of rebellion. Tonight I pray for mercy. And tonight I call on you, Abba Father, that Lord, I receive the grace to be submissive to the authority you have placed over me in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace, O oh God, to surrender totally. O oh God, to the authority you have placed over me. I know I'm not, a, I'm not here by mistake. I'm not in Nambadini in Jesus only by mistake. Lord, I receive the grace to be submissive to the authority, the instituted authority you have laid over me in the mighty name of Jesus, so that I would not fall a victim of being rebellious to you, because being rebellious to the authority is rebellious to yourself. Lord, I receive the grace tonight in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, have mercy over me, and I ask for grace, grace to be obedient to the authority, 
to be submissive to the authority you have laid over me in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive that grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In the same vein, I want us to open to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. We are still praying for the authorities the Lord has placed over us. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. The Bible says, Here are my directions. Pray much for others. Plead for God's mercy upon them. Give thanks for all he is going to do for them. Verse 2 says, Pray in this way. Pray for kings and all others who are in authorities over us or in place of higher responsibilities so that we can live in the peace and quietness, spending our time in godly living and thinking much about the Lord. There is a popular saying that we normally hear or people say that don't talk to other men about people you have not spoken to God about first. I don't know if you understand my point. Don't talk about people to another, another human being if you have not spoken about that same person to God first. We are falling a victim of this. I myself inclusive. We have been saying that that leader is a very bad leader. Is this, is that. But have you actually taken the matter to God first? That president is so bad, is so wicked, is this, is that. But have you actually taken the matter to God first? We are going to lift up our voice and pray tonight. That Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy over us. Have mercy over us. And I pray, Almighty Father, that you circumcise our heart. Circumcise my mouth. Circumcise my heart, my mouth, O oh God, to be in accordance to your will for my life. So that I can do what you want me to do with regards to people you have placed in the place of authority over me. My pastors, my leaders, the president, the prime ministers, my lecturers, my teachers in school, everyone that is in the place of authority, so that I can do what I am, what, what you have put in my heart as my responsibility in terms of prayers, in terms of committing them into your hands, in terms of praying for them. Lord, I receive this grace tonight in the name of Jesus. I receive this grace tonight in the name of Jesus. I will not fall a victim of just being criticized, just criticizing them alone without actually praying for them. I will not just be criticizing them alone without actually committing them into your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, is our desire, O oh God, that you will change our heart. You will give us a new heart, Lord, to do what you want us to do as Christians, as child of God. Lord, we pray that you will do unto us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus and your name alone will be glorified as we do this in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Rock of Ages. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lastly, before we sit down, I want us to just lift up the vessel that the Lord has used for us tonight unto God's holy hands. Virtues have left her. We are going to lift up our voice and pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, concerning your daughter you have used tonight, Father, Lord, we pray that for every virtue that have left her, refill that to the brim in the name of Jesus. Lord, for every virtue that have left her tonight, we pray, refill her to the brim in the name of Jesus. More grace, more anointing, more of yours in our life in the name of Jesus. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you. We give you all the glory because the Bible says... Unto you shall the guardian of your people be. For your daughter tonight that you have used for us, we pray, Almighty Father, that you bless her in return in the name of Jesus. And for the word that has gone out, O oh God, we pray, let these words mix with faith in our heart. So that it will not just be, will not be the hearer alone, but the doer of the word. In the name of Jesus. We cause every spirit of rebellion in our life in the name of Jesus. We cause that spirit in the name of Jesus. And we decree we are children of obedience in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. And for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Please, let's have our seat majestically in the presence of the Lord. Good evening one more time. And I want to welcome you to the very last service, the very last day in the month of February. And I want to believe that God that has seen us thus far. We see us through the remaining part of this year in the mighty name of Jesus. One thing that is sure is that we are triumphant in Christ. And our victory is settled in him in Jesus' name.
please let's work with this understanding no matter what, no matter the situation, no matter what is happening around us. The Bible says that a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand by our right. It said with our eyes we shall see, but will not come near our dwellings. This will be our testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now we are going to our communion right now and the communion of today will be taken from the book, I mean the passage for the communion will be taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. As I've said, today is the last day of the month of February. In the next couple of hours, we'll be moving into the third month of the year. And we want to commit that month unto God's holy hands for him to see us through, for him to go ahead of us, for him to prepare the ground for us, for him to make every crooked way straight. Isaiah chapter, sorry, yeah, Isaiah 45 verse 1 two, three, and I will read from here. Forty-five, one, two, three. This is what the Lord is saying to his anointed, to Jesus' our story, whose right hand I have, I take hold of to subdue the nations before him, and to strip kings of their hammer, and to open doors before him, so that the gates will be shut, will not be shut. I will go before you. I can't hear you saying amen. amen. And I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze, and cut through the bars of irons. I will give you the hidden treasures, Riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summoned you by my name. This is what, <coughs> excuse me, this is what I'm going to be praying unto God for, for the month of March, that we are moving into the next couple of months, I mean, next couple of hours. And solely what we are just going to be praying unto God for is that Father, via tonight's communion, he will go ahead of us and level every mountain, making every crooked way straight. He said he will break asunder every bars of iron. And he said that every gates of every gate of iron, he will cut them into pieces. He said he will give us hidden treasures and riches stored in secret places. I don't know what your own bars of iron might have been in the month of January and February. I don't know what that situation might have been. There might have been a bars of iron. I don't know what that mountain might have been that you are struggling to summon. It might be in your health. It might be in your finances. It might be in your academics. It might be in your relationship. It might be in any way, any form. I want you to key into this particular verse of the Bible. And I want you to use the communion we're going to be taking tonight to decree concerning that particular mountain, concerning that particular crooked way that it seems as if it will not get to an end by saying that, Father, by tonight's communion, let every crooked way be made straight. Let every mountain be leveled. In my health, in my career, in my relationship, in my family, concerning that financial issues, I want the ministers to please help us distribute the communion as we are about to pray. I don't know what that particular thing might have been, but I want us to leave it up unto God in prayers tonight in your seated position. Replaying that verse of the Bible, Isaiah 45, 1 to, 1 to 3, in your head, in your mind, as it pertains to that particular issue. That Father God Almighty, you said, Heaven and earth may pass away, but a jot out of my word will not return to me void. Such as the word, as the deal from heaven <clears throat> will not return, but you accomplish what you have said, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. Lord, what you have said in Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 3. Let it be a reality as I'm partaking of this communion tonight in the name of Jesus. Let every mountain become leveled. Let every crooked way be made straight. 
in the name of Jesus, in my health, in my career, in my family, in my finances, in my relationship, in everything that I cannot even open my mouth to speak, to tell a fellow brethren. The Bible says God knows all things, and in him everything is made clear. Let's lift up that particular issue unto God's holy hands, that Lord, as I'm transiting into this new month of March, that mountain, as it pertains to Job, Lord, level them in the name of Jesus. As it pertains to our health, that particular report that the doctor might have said, for this, we don't know what we need to do. We don't even have a solution for. The great physician is in the house. And by tonight, communion, tie it onto it because we believe that as we move into this new month, there will be testimony in the name of Jesus. Speak to God concerning that issue. Speak to God. Talk to him. Father, we worship your name this evening. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. For thus far, you've helped us. We thank you, O God, for January. We thank you, O God, for February. We thank you, God, from the very first day of this month up until this last day of the month. We appreciate you, Father, for all the victories. Lord, according to your word in Isaiah 45, we present this new month unto your holy hands via tonight's communion. Let it be our month of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Concerning everything that your children have spoken to you about today, this very hour. Lord, via tonight's communion, let them turn to testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree and declare tonight, let an end come, as today is marking the end of this month of February. Let an end come to that particular issue that they have spoken to you about in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we transit into the month of March, we march into our testimonies in the name of Jesus. We march into our open doors in the name of Jesus. We march into our victories in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, Almighty Father, our testimonies is permanent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for answering our prayers. Thank you because indeed you have heard us tonight. We say may your name alone be praised and be lifted up. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please partake of of the communion prayerfully, and we believe that you will come back with your testimonies in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together for this King of kings, for this Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we round up the service, I will just run through the announcement we have for tonight. And after the announcement, we'll be going to our various houses and place of abode. Media, if you can help me to scroll on the screen, that will be fine. But the first announcement I will start with is to inform and to remind us of our prayer conference starting in how many days' time? Exactly 30 days' time. Hallelujah. Is anyone actually anxious or excited or looking forward to this life-transforming event? Hallelujah. I want to encourage you and to plead with you. Please do what you need to do to make it for all the sessions of the prayer conference 2023. And I can bet we, I mean, I can assure you that you will not regret that decision. Push things around, make all things that you can move around to be available for all the sessions, starting from the Thursday event on the 30th, true to the uh, Sunday one, and I'm sure our testimony will come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Media, are we fine? Or I should just go on. Okay. The next one is the event happening tonight. There will be Jesus' House family uh, new month entry prayer and fasting today, and it, this will be event will be on Zoom. The theme for the event is Catch the Fire Fresh and Strong. I'm sure uh, the 
Zoom details will be sent on our platforms tonight so that we can join. The event starts at 10.30 p.m. today, and it will end at 12 midnight. So please, uh, let's watch out for the link to join or the flyer in all our uh, groups, and that will be sent tonight. Um, okay. Uh, the other announcement, our normal announcement, uh, Zoom prayers for the Jesus House family, I mean, Jesus House story event. Sorry, I can't see. I'll just, maybe you need to follow me. So, uh, our Zoom prayers, uh, we normally have Zoom, or Zoom prayers every of the days of the week, apart from Tuesdays, Friday, and Sunday, because on Tuesday we are here in church, like today in the evening. Fridays as well, VGO and Sunday because of uh, Sunday service. So please, for every other days, kindly join the Zoom event. I mean, the Zoom prayers. The link should be displayed on the screen for us. And if you don't know, maybe if you just see any of your ushers after the service, you don't have the link, and it will be sent across to us. For anyone that needs to meet the pastor, for any counseling, for any advice, for any uh, talks, please, uh, there is a counseling session or every Wednesday. Kindly book uh, using the uh, QR code. I think there is another one at the entrance of the church on the announcement board. So please, let's use that to book any to book the session with pastor and also Next week, Sunday, is our Thanksgiving service, which is the Thanksgiving service for the month of March. I want to join us and to encourage us to come with our dancing shoes and with the attitude of Thanksgiving to thank this God that has seen us through into the month of March. The services will also be two services for this Thanksgiving, one at 10 and uh, the other second service at 11.30. So please make it a date, and the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. I think every other announcement can be posted on our groups uh, if there are announcements that I've missed. So please, can we just be on our feet as we just appreciate the Lord for everything he has done tonight. Let's exalt his name. Let's give him all the glory, all the honor, the adoration. Let's thank him for the blessings we have seen. Let's thank him for all the things that he's doing currently as we speak. Let's thank him for what he has planned ahead of us in the month of March that we are marching into. Let's appreciate this God. Let's bless him. Let's worship him. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name, O Lord. We say may your name alone be praised. May your name alone be lifted. Uh, thank you, Abba Father, for all the things you've done. We are like that one leper. We are back to say thank you for all the things you've done in this month of February. Lord, we are not an ingrate. We return our glory unto you. And we say, Father, Lord, perfect all that concerns your children in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything we have said into your hearings tonight, oh God, we pray that Almighty God let them turn to testimonies in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we move from here, we move into our testimonies in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, let doors open unto us on, our, on their own accord in the name of Jesus. Let the two left gates, oh Lord, be opened unto us in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your glory rise upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. And let us, oh God, be a blessing to others in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. This and message have has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United Kingdom and the world. If you would like to support us, kindly visit our website on www.jesushousestory.org. God bless you.